As I said last week, I started this message and there were so many things I wanted to say and this week I want to continue that thought. And last week we looked at being a father as being the greatest job in the world. But I think, and as I said last week, it goes beyond just being a father, but being an example, being a mentor, being a Christian that lives right. And uh, one of the things that I used to say to people, and people used to say to me sometimes in life, is that if you were doing a job and you weren't there all of the time, you were a part-timer. And I remember years ago, I preached a message on being a part-time Christian. And I think you can also apply that to being a part-time parent who are following, and many Christians are following, a part-time God who's okay on Sunday, but the rest of the week doesn't matter. And as we read last week, the uh, verses 1 through 5, we found that God blessed those who lived right, who feared God, and the question was asked of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's almost a complete quote from this very uh, chapter. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. God first. Amen. Amen. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. That doesn't sound very part-time to me. <laughs> You know, a lot of times we do jobs to put food on the table, to pay our bills and all that kind of thing. But then we might have something that we really love. But the Lord should be that one we really love. So this, this morning I'd like to continue that by looking at not only right living, but right leadership. They used to say everything stands or falls on leadership. There has to be leadership in the church, amen? amen? There has to be a pastor. There has to be Christians who help and who encourage. There has to be soul winners. There have to be those who show the direction to go. We're not aimlessly leaving, uh, going all over the place. Even sheep have a shepherd who leads to pasture and to water and things like that. But I think in our lives, what we need more than anything else is to follow the right leadership. And that leadership, first of all, comes from the Word of God. Amen. Isaiah said to the law, if they don't speak according to this law, this word, it's because there is no truth in them. It does not matter what a man says. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what a politician says. They'll change it tomorrow. It doesn't matter what a, a, a pope or a priest or a minister says. What does the Word of God say? Amen. What does the Word of God say about being born again? Amen. Ye must be born again. We were in Poland and I talked to this, this guy who was preaching in the streets. I don't speak practically any Polish. I can say a few words here and there. But he sounded good. He sounded like he was really, really preaching the word. So I went up to the guy who was there with him and I said, uh, can you work your way to heaven? He said, oh yes. And I knew. And so many people think they can work their way to heaven. Yet the Bible clearly shows through the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. That's it. If you're going to follow the leadership of the Bible... You've got to follow the right leadership, amen. amen. But you've also got to follow the, the, the right leadership in this world. Because you've got to be careful not to follow men, amen. Yeah. Follow the Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Now I thank God for good godly men and women who have helped me in my life. But you've got to have them in the right perspective. We're all only sinners saved by grace at best. <clears throat> the Bible says, the Lord Jesus said, when you've done everything, everything, and who's done everything? He said, see, we are unprofitable servants. We've only done that which was our duty to do. The best we can do, even as Christians, could not get us into heaven. The very best. So we have to be careful 
that we present the right leadership. And for that to be true, the Lord has to be our focus. Amen. I was uh, watching on YouTube. I like to watch YouTube and, and sometimes you get some interesting things off it. And one of the things that came up in the feed, I don't know why, but it came up, and we're talking about the Game Boy. Remember the Game Boy? My daughter used to be addicted to Game Boy. I mean, she all the time playing this, and, and it's a stupid wee thing. <coughs> this wee creature goes all over the place, but she was addicted to it. You know, Paul talked about, in the book of Romans, people who had addicted themselves to the ministry. Addicted themselves to be in the right kind of leadership, the right kind of example, the right kind of person you could point to and say, those people will pray for me, they will help me, they will encourage me. You know, there's a lot of people out there who are in the ministry of discouragement, who will put you down, who will say all kinds of bad things about everybody and everything. But we need those who will encourage us, amen. And that's part of being a good example. You know, Putting God first in your life should not be a burden. Amen. Let me say that again. <laughs> Putting God first in your life should not be a burden. Oh, 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 God, oh, my Bible, I've got to read my, I've got to pray, I've got to go to church. Really? It should be a joy. A wonderful time to get together with God's people to hear the word of God. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing, hear by the word of God. So as you're under the sound of <coughs> the preaching, your faith is being increased. Amen. We ought to follow the Lord and put him first in our life. Too many times children see our parents put everything else ahead of God. The world, our jobs, our hobbies, our friends. And then we come to church on Sunday and make God a God of Sunday. What about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? You see, that's all a part of leadership, of being a godly father, being a godly Christian, a godly believer, a disciple. You know one of the things that mark being a disciple is they follow Jesus around. Amen. Who are we following? Not only should the Lord be our focus, but he should be our fixation. They asked Jesus, what's, what's the great commandment? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. With all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. I'm not going to ask the question, but if I did, ask the question this morning of myself and everyone else, have we really loved the Lord with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our might, with all our soul? All of us, including me, would have to say no. I've still got quite far to go. But the Lord should be our fixation. You know, when the disciples were in a storm, as they often were. When they were in a problem, as they often were. When Peter got out of the boat and began walking on the water, everything was fine as long as he kept his eyes on the Lord. How many times have we gone down because we're looking around us? Looking at ourselves. Looking at our finances, looking at our friends, looking at the world, instead of getting our eyes on the Lord. The Bible in the book of Hebrews says, but we see Jesus, who is made a little lower than angels for the suffering of sins. He is our focus. He is the one we should be fixated on. Our love should consume him completely. Not only right living and right leadership, but right learning. This is why I'm so much a believer in the King James Bible as the perfect word of God. Amen. <clears throat> if you're going to learn right, you better get a book that's right. I remember years ago when I was in university over in Paisley, I, I had a project, I had to go, and it was funny. I had to go into the library and find all the old books on physics and compare them to the books of today. You know the things they were saying in there was absolute nuts? People living on the sun? It's like, what? People are living on the sun? All kinds of strange things that people thought were true 
that today have changed. One thing that doesn't change is the Bible. Amen. It doesn't change. The God of the Bible doesn't change. It's not what I say or what you say or what some man says or certain preacher says, but the Word of God must be precious to us. Amen. The book of Proverbs talks about selling everything and buying the truth. I think it's good to have a good Bible, amen? <clears throat> I think it's good to invest our time, our energy, our treasure in having a good Bible that we read. How do we have right learning? First of all, we are to store up the words of God. The Bible says we are a new creature in Christ when you're saved. A new creation, something different. When you become born again, your mind starts to change, your heart starts to change, your thoughts start to change, your language starts to change because we're a new creature. Some people are just creatures, but we're creatures. We talk about being a creature of habit. We ought to be a new creature in Christ. People ought to be able to point to us and say, I don't know what's happened to so-and-so, but I know something's happened. Right learning. We are to have the Word of God change us. Here's a good phrase. Nothing can happen through me until it first happens in me. Think about that. Nothing can happen through me until it first happens in me. God can't change your circumstances until He changes you. You can pray about, talk about, Complain about what's going on around you, but oftentimes God won't change that until He changes you. Yeah. I remember years ago, a guy came to me and says, I'd like to, for you to pray that God will send me a Christian wife. And I, and I said to this individual a long time ago, I said, are you ready to be married? He said, what? I said, it's not just about the wedding ceremony and the honeymoon. Are you ready for what it takes to be a Christian husband, a leader, the right kind of individual who will help support and encourage your family and your wife? And he looked at me with those glade eyes like, what? <laughs> I said, you're not ready. Are you ready for God to bless you? Are you ready for God to change your circumstances? Are you in the place that you're ready? One of my favorite portions of the Bible, I've said many times about Zacchaeus. We Zacchaeus climbed up a tree. And the Bible says the Lord came to the place and looked up. That was not an accident, folks. It wasn't something that just Jesus happened to be going by that way. And Zacchaeus happened to climb the tree. He knew exactly where he would be. But imagine Zacchaeus wasn't up at the tree at that time. Are we ready? The Word of God is to change us, but do we want it to change us? We are not only to store the Word of God in our hearts. The Bible talks about, I, 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 Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And in our passage of Scripture, it talks about sharing them with our family, with our children. But not only that, we are to share them with others. And that, to me, talks about soul winning. When was the last time we shared the gospel with someone? When was the last time we said to someone, let me tell you what happened to me when I met Jesus. Let me share with you what God has done in my life. You know what Jesus said? Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But Lord, this is a different time. Lord, the, the, people won't listen. Lord, it, 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 go. The Lord only says go. He doesn't say he gets so many results. He doesn't say this, that, and the other. He just says, go. Do we have going in our growing? Do we have going in our groaning? Do we have going in our gospel? Do we go with the gospel? Do we take gospel? Here's the first thing. I always like to do this. Put gospel tracks in your wallet or in your handbag or in your, your coat pocket. How many times have you got to the place where you've got an opportunity to witness someone and you've got any gospel tracts? If you need some, let me know. I'll provide some. Amen. We are to share the gospel. We are to show by our lives an example to
to make people hungry for the Word of God. You know, my, my mother likes salt. And when I say she likes salt, it's, it's almost... Salt, salt, salt. And she doesn't even taste it. She says it needs more salt. But you know the thing about salt, if you drink a lot of salt, it makes you want to drink water. And I'm afraid today we don't have very many salty Christians. They've compromised. They've gone along with the world. They've decided they'll just want to fit in. And so they've lost their saltiness. It used to be you could tell a Christian. It used to be you knew what they believed. But I'm afraid today we are in a society and a world that sh just goes along with it. Just do it. Just do what we say. That's not providing leadership. We are to stand for God even in days like this. One of my favorite songs growing up was Stand Up. Stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. This day the noise of battle, the next the victor song. Stand up for Jesus. I remember <coughs> years ago, and as you know, I grew up in Edinburgh. I came to Glasgow, and the first question I was asked was, well, what football team do you support? And ignorantly I said, well, what does that matter? But you see, people were trying to figure out was I this way or that way? And when I would tell them, I don't support any I support Jesus, it's like, oh no. <laughs> Standing up for Jesus. This is what Paul said in 2 Timothy 2, 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. It's a good verse. 2 Timothy 2, 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the fears of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. When you're standing for, up for Jesus, it's important to be careful about the things you get entangled with. You know, the devil has no problem with Christians being diverted here and there instead of focusing on the gospel. There are so many things going on in the world that it would be easy to follow every rabbit trail out there. And most of them are right. But it's not the gospel. It's not what we should focus on. We should focus on the Lord. Paul said to Timothy, don't get entangled with the things of this world so much so that you're not pleasing God. Amen. What kind of things can we get entangled with? Well, we can be distracted. We can be defeated. We can be discouraged. And we can just plain give up. I like in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah quit. You ever felt like quitting? You ever get to the place where you say, I'm done. I'm finished. This, this living for Jesus, it, it doesn't give me what I'm looking for. And Jeremiah said, I'm not going to speak anymore. I'm going to throw the towel in. If you're saved, when you throw the towel in, the Lord will throw it right back in your face. <laughs> there is no place to give up. There is no place to just get out of the fight. You've got to keep on going. You've got to be careful what you get involved with. You've got to be careful of the things that will weigh you down. Many years ago when I was in the army, and if you've ever been in the military, you know what I'm talking about. When they say go for a run, they don't mean in nice gym shorts and nice gym shoes. They have things they put on your back <laughs> called weights. And then they have a rifle that they want you to go with as well. And then when they've got 50, 60 pounds on your back and your, your rifle, they say, run! <laughs> The Bible says to take off the weights and the things that are stopping us from learning and living the right kind of life. We have to be careful what we get involved in. We have to be careful about the things that discourage us. Paul said, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You know, the trials that come our way 
the Bible says are for our benefit. If you take a metal and put it in the fire and then quench it in the water, the metal gets stronger. And the reason why God puts us in the fire sometimes is to burn off the impurities and to strengthen us. Has God ever burned impurities from your life? Has God ever put you in a hard, difficult place that you've had to stand up and get harder? Let me tell you, if you're going to follow the Lord, you've got to be hard. Amen. This lily-livered, snowflake Christianity, where everything goes their way and there's a million in the bank, and they drive the, the great car and all the rest of it, is not the Christianity of the Bible. Amen. They're, they're there for endure hardness as a good soldier. Sometimes you just got to get on with it and say, Lord, I know you're going to bless me. I'm just going to keep on going and not stop. Yeah. I remember I've told you many years ago when I was in the army, went through a series of <clears throat> things to get to the place we wanted to go. And one of the things was the log race. And you had this big telephone pole, and they had uh, two on one end, two in the middle, and two in the end, and, and you would run up and down hills for seven miles. I remember getting the last hill, getting to the top of it, and I quit. Unfortunately, the guy next to me quit first. <laughs> so I had to pick up the whole log because I didn't want the people in the front to fail. How many times... You just have to pick up the log. And keep going. You see, this is what it means to be a good leader, a good father, a good husband, a good son or daughter, a good whatever you want to call it. This is what it really means, the nitty-gritty stuff. One of my favorite songs growing up, I'm showing my age. I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. Some of you may not even know it. But the Lord never promised an easy life. He never promised a life of constant blessings and everything going your way. But He did promise He would go with you. He did say, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And that to me is more important than any money, Amen. than anything anyone else can promise me, to know that the Lord is with me. Even in the battle, even in the fire. Go to the book of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar the king. You better do what I say or I'm throwing you in the fire. So they got in the fire, walked around. And Nebuchadnezzar says, did we not throw three and there's four? And one is like the Son of God. Amen. Of course, that's in my Bible. You, your Bible will say something different if you've got a different one. In the fire, the Lord was there. In the fires the Lord puts us through, He doesn't send us by ourselves. He goes with us. That's the kind of leadership we need today. That's the kind of Christians we need today. Hard Christians, steadfast Christians, who will stand up for God and not be part-timers. I remember years ago, when I got, back in the, the 90s, I joined the, the Territorial Army on the weekends. It was interesting. And I always used to finish at 9 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning so I could get to church. And it was interesting. But, you know, I was just a part-time soldier. How many Christians are part-timers? How many Christians serve a part-time God? How many Christians have a God that they can put in their closet or in their wallet or something and then put them away for the rest of the week? If that's the kind of God you have, you have the wrong God. Because even the temple could not contain God. Amen. God is everywhere. And God should be everything in our life. So we might follow Him. The wonderful thing about being a Christian is that God allows us to make U-turns at any time. God allows us to get back to Him at any time. As far as salvation, he says, all that cometh to me, I will not cast out. Come unto me, all you that labor, and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. 
I was studying that this week in John chapter 19 and 20 about Peter. And the Lord asked him three times, Lovest thou me more than these? And he said, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest. And I think the third time he realized, Uh oh, I just denied the Lord three times. And he asked me three times, Do you love me more than these? I'd like to finish this morning with that question being asked to myself and to you. Do we love the Lord more than anything? As our verse said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. That's the kind of Christian we need today. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for the Word of God. We thank you. It's quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Lord, we know that we live in difficult, terrible times. Help us to be the kind of Christians who are ready to stand for you, to show our love for you, to show our love in, in seeking others for Christ. Bless our time of invitation. Speak to our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.